Today, I'll be reading a very short story by Fox Corp, titled Temper Temper. If you have anything to say about our content, please leave a comment. We're a new channel, and the feedback would really help us out. New Olin had been a stubborn thorn in the galaxy's side for far too long. For over 200 years, the planet exported nothing but terrorism and instability. In 3489 AD, the human contingent of Galfleet was dispatched to deal with the insurrectionist cells on the planet's surface once and for all. The Nulians, the species that originated on Olin and had later colonised New Olin, had finally caved to galactic pressure and allowed peacekeepers to stabilise the region. The Nulians' own strike groups were often corrupt, leading their orbital bombardment to often miss the central hubs of insurgent activity. The Nulians and the rest of the galaxy knew the humans could get the job done and were counting on an efficient and spectacular end to this stain on the galaxy at large. Contrary to what the Nulians had feared, humanity was taking great care to not inflict damage on civilian areas. This care and conservative application of orbital firepower are what led to the infamous events of March 25th, 3489 to occur, mostly without a hitch. There was one hitch, however, that went down in galactic history, not for its failure, but for its overwhelming impact on one particular area's geography. While the airborne insertion, spearheaded by the illustrious Combined Special Operations Unit, performed surgical strikes on insurgent cells within urban areas, the 250-strong Tactical Operations Group bombarded less crowded areas of terrorist concentration from orbit. The capital ship within this group, the UNE Wisconsin, was busy targeting hotbeds across the entire continent of Rylas when a lone shot from a planetary defence cannon slammed into one of its secondary batteries. The shot was able to puncture the ship's shields and went through seven inches of armour plating. Only three of the gunners in the secondary battery were injured, suffering from quite extreme tinnitus for roughly two days. The secondary battery itself was not affected. Captain Aaron, commander of the UNE Wisconsin, was very affected. He and everyone else on the ship could only be described as absolutely unhinged by a reporter on board the ship at the time and the crew promptly moved to file a complaint with the operator of the planetary defence cannon. All 24 of the Wisconsin's main batteries targeted the exact coordinates of the insolent cannon at once, and fired with extreme prejudice. Even the secondary batteries stopped targeting their assigned regions, and opened up on the general area where the cannon once stood to join in on the fun. Even the battery hit by the cannon opened up, actually shooting for at least 15 minutes longer than everyone else, because the gunners couldn't hear the order to cease fire until a runner was able to tell them in person. After this roughly 20-minute concussive therapy session, the shooting from the UNE Wisconsin ceased. The UNE bat out of hell, one of Wisconsin's escorts, sent only two words to the raging giant in response. Temper! Temper! Word of the incident spread fast across the region, and soon after the entire galaxy. The response of the UNE Wisconsin had gone down into legend, but the actions of the defence cannon puzzled many until the crew of investigators reached the two-mile-deep, five-mile-wide crater where the cannon once stood. Roughly two millimetres of torn fabric were found a mile away from the crater's edge, and after substantial forensic analysis, they were found to be a 100% match to one of the many armbands worn by insurgent forces. The current theory is that a defence cannon operator was bribed to fire upon human forces in orbit by a local insurgent cell. Logs from that day also revealed that dozens of other defence cannons had also received monetary transactions from shady sources, but the operators of these cannons had a little more common sense and didn't fire on any human ships when push came to shove. 274 years later, the human intervention is still recognised as a total success. It left New Orleans as one of the most stable planets within the local area, and the tale of humanity's precision, care, and overwhelming firepower lives on through a great multitude of lakes and statues, none more impressive than the aptly named Lake Wisconsin itself. And that brings us to the end of today's short story. If you enjoy the stories we we weed... Uh, weed? My goodness, what's wrong with me? If you enjoy the stories we read and want to keep listening in, be sure to hit the birds to subscribe.